Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about the joule thomson effect. This is one of the most important theories in thermodynamics that we need to know about. This theory is related to the expansion of real gases. So what is joule thomson effect and what is the mathematical derivation of it? In this video, we are going to see everything about that. So let's start. Joule and Thomson investigated the expansion of real gases under adiabatic condition and they found out very interesting result. They found out that when gas expands in adiabatic condition, they cool down except for hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen and helium heats up when they are expanded in adiabatic condition. Let me write that. Joule and Thomson found out that gas gases cools cools when they are when they are expanded when they are expanded in adiabatic condition adiabatic condition except for hydrogen and helium hydrogen and helium heats up right but what is the meaning of this adiabatic condition you know very well adiabatic condition simply means the system and surrounding will not exchange any heat energy between them now just imagine we are considering the adiabatic case that means there won't be any heat energy supply from the surrounding to the system that means the gas will not get energy from outside but if it expand it's temporary uh, like if it expand then it has to do certain work done to do the work done it needs energy then where will it get it from obviously it should have got from the surrounding but we know that it can't get from the energy from the surrounding as we are considering adiabatic condition so obviously it has to manage energy from itself so it will use its own internal energy to expand and while doing that the temperature of the system decreases let me write that little bit Joule and Thomson, sorry, Joule Thomson effect states that states that when a real gas passes passes through a porous plug to a porous plug from a high pressure region to a low pressure region low pressure region under adiabatic condition under adiabatic condition then it gets cooled cooled except for hydrogen and helium so this is what the statement of joule thomson effect actually is you have to remember this statement in order to write an examination now let's see the joule thomson experiment and its mathematical formulation joule and thomson considered a tube like this and the wall of the tube is adiabatic in nature and they put a porous plug inside it at the middle of the tube this is the porous plug. Porous plug are made up of wool or any other material that have small holes from which gases can pass from one side to another side if the pressure of one side increases. Okay, so this lets the gas to pass through it. Okay, so this is the adiabatic wall. Adiabatic wall. And this is the porous plug. Porous plug. Now they consider uh, they put the pistons over here. Actually, two pistons on two sides of the porous plug. They were weightless and frictionless piston, so that we can vary the pressure. Okay, and they put some gases over here. Any gas, any real gas like nitrogen. Let us consider nitrogen gas is over here on two sides of the 
porous plug within the uh, pistons. This piston is A, this piston is B. Now, what they did was they pushed the piston A little inward. And as a result of that, the gas in this portion were forced to go inside, right? This is the direction of piston A. Now, if the pressure of this region increases, then obviously the gas were passed through this porous plug to other side and this piston was moved outward. That means this region was expanding and gases were expanding. The, uh, the tube contained pressure and volume sorry pressure and temperature measuring devices as well so that we can continuously monitor the conditions over there and when this piston moved over here then suddenly the temperature of this region decreases that is the temperature started to decrease whatever temperature the gas had over here the temperature decreases on the decreased on the other side the pressure of this region now is p1 the pressure of this region now is p2 volume is v1 and volume is v2 so they did this small experiment by this they proved that the gas actually cools down when it expand in adiabatic condition this is what they did now let's do the mathematical calculation but before that let's write little bit about this they took a tube they took a tube with porous plug porous plug inside it inside it and two pistons were fitted fitted and when the piston a is pushed inward inwards the gas passed through the gas passed through porous plug. I'm writing PP for porous plug. Okay. Then the gas passed through porous plug and expanded, expanded as piston B moved outwards. Outward. Okay. They absorbed. They absorbed the decrease in temperature. Decrease in temperature for all the real gases real gases except for hydrogen and helium for hydrogen and helium there was heating effect and for other real gases like nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon they all showed cooling effect so this is what they did this is the this is the experiment of joule and thomson or joule thomson experiment now, by seeing this figure, we can derive the mathematical formulation of it. For that, let me erase this portion. By seeing this figure, we can derive the mathematical formulation of joule thomson experiment. So, let's do that. First of all, see over here, there was gas in this region and piston A is moving inward. So, piston A is pushing the gas, right? So, the work done by by piston A on gas, piston A on gas will be equal to minus P1 V1, the pressure into volume. But there is a negative sign over here because whenever we do the work on the gas, then that work done is negative. And if the work is being done by the gas, then the work is positive. That's why when piston A moves inward, it pushes the gas inward. So the uh, work done on the gas becomes minus P1 V1. Similarly, the work done by gas on piston B will be equal to P2 V2. Here we can see over here, this gas is pushing the piston outward. That means this gas is doing the work done. That's why it is positive. Now, total work done, total work done will be equal to how much? Yes, you are correct. P2 V2 minus P1 V1. The sum of these two values is the total work done. Let's consider it to be equation number one. Now, as we are reading thermodynamics, then let's use the first law of thermodynamics using 
using first law of thermodynamics we can write what is the first law of thermodynamics del q is equal to del e plus w so del q means change in heat energy del e means change in internal energy w means total work done or uh, let's find out the value of del e so del e will be equal to del q minus w now as we are talking about adiabatic condition so for adiabatic condition the value of del q will be equal to how much zero because there won't be any exchange of heat energy between the system and surrounding then this equation will become del e is equal to minus w let's consider it to be equation number two now let's put the value of total work done that is w from equation one in equation two let me write over here using equation one in two then what do we get total work done simply means del e del e is equal to minus p2 v2 minus p1 v1 and e2 me e, del e means e2 minus e1 right is equal to p2 v2 plus p1 v1 because this minus minus becomes plus now if we arrange it rearrange it we will get e2 my plus e2 v2 is equal to e1 plus p1 v1 and this now becomes h2 h1 because i have already made a video about this you can check the link in the description below the formula of enthalpy is e plus pv that means the total heat contained in a system is equal to the total internal energy plus the work done okay so in place of e2 plus pv p2 v2 we can write h2 and in place of e1 plus p1 v1 we can write h1 sorry this would be h1 or this will be h2 minus h1 equals to 0 let me write over here and it will be dh is equal to 0 or del h is equal to 0 let's consider this equation to be 3 now from here what do we see in this particular process sorry in joule thomson experiment the change in enthalpy is 0 that means the change in enthalpy in this region and this region are same that's why this process is called isoenthalpic process let me write the let me write it over here for that let me erase it as uh, the change in as the change in enthalpy enthalpy is zero that is del h is equal to zero joule thomson effect is an isoenthalpic isoenthalpic process or effect that is there won't be any change in enthalpy now let's continue the derivation now we know that this process is uh, isoenthalpic and we uh, also know that the enthalpy is a state function that means it only depends on the initial and the final state and it does not depend on the path since enthalpy is a state function state function and a complete and a complete differential complete differential complete differential means we can put or we can apply Euler's theorem over here also enthalpy is a function of temperature and pressure we are considering enthalpy to be the function of pressure and temperature that means it can be written as that is enthalpy is equal to function of pressure and temperature now as it is a complete differential we can put Euler's theorem over here now try to understand in Euler's theorem what do we do we put ds over here now we take partial derivative of this h with respect to this p at constant temperature t and again we take the partial derivative of this h with respect to t at constant p okay this is how we do so we will write like this del h by del p del p at constant temperature t and dp here there is del p so we will write dp plus again del h by 
del t at constant pressure p into dt i hope you understood this condition this is euler's theorem of mathematics okay now here what do we see there is a term del h by del t into p now try to remember we have already seen this term in previous video since del h by del t p is called cp cp means molar heat capacity at constant pressure i have already made a video about that as well please go and watch that video so this whole quantity is called cp so in this place we can write that so this becomes dh equals to del h by del p t into dp plus cp into dt right and in this particular case in joule thomson experiment the value of dh is how much zero that is it is isoenthalpic process and change in enthalpy is zero so in this place we can write zero is equal to del h by del p t dp plus cp into dt from here let's take this value to this side and let's cp to other side if we solve it we will directly get this much dt is equal to minus 1 by cp del h by del p t dp right this can further be written as del t is equals to minus 1 by cp del h by del p t del p this is the mathematical relation between the lowering of temperature and lowering of pressure in joule thomson experiment we know that when the pressure decreases then the temperature also decreases this relation proves that when the temperature decreases the pressure also decreases this is the mathematical relation of uh, change in sorry lowering of temperature and lowering of pressure let's consider this whole to be equation number how much I think 4 right equation 4 sorry where where del T is the lowering of temperature lowering of temperature and del P is lowering of pressure but this is not the complete thing that we wanted to derive we need one more mathematical value for that let me erase this portion now let's divide this equation number 5 that is the upper equation by dp at constant enthalpy let me write that dividing equation 5 by dp at constant enthalpy at constant enthalpy that is h then if we talk about constant term then we have to put partial derivative over there then this becomes del t by del p at constant enthalpy h equals to what is there minus 1 by cp into del h by del p t right and this value will be 1 so we can simply put this value now this quantity is denoted by mu you might be thinking what is the meaning of this mu the meaning of this mu is it is the joule thomson coefficient here yeah. mu is equal to the joule thomson coefficient the joule thomson coefficient this is a mathematical value it might have positive sign or negative sign or even zero so if mu is positive the gas shows the gas shows cooling effect the gas shows cooling effect if mu is negative the gas shows heating effect heating effect and if mu is zero so no joule thomson effect no joule thomson effect and uh, uh, the temperature at which mu is zero the, the gas do not show any cooling or heating effect and that is the case for ideal gas ideal gas do not show heating or cooling effect on expansion so this is what the joule thomson effect actually is now let's understand why all the gases except hydrogen and helium are cooled down 
at room temperature when they expand and hydrogen and helium gets heated let's understand that vision you can read the question over here why hydrogen and helium gets heated when they expand let's understand why hydrogen and helium gets heated and all the other gases gets cool down when they expand in adiabatic condition at room temperature we know that the heating and cooling depends on the value of mu mu is yes you are correct joule thomson coefficient when mu is positive it shows cooling effect cooling effect when mu is negative it shows heating effect but when mu is zero no effect that is the case of ideal gas right so for every gas there is a point or there is a temperature at which the value of mu becomes zero let me write that for every gas there is a there is a temperature or there is a characteristic temperature temperature at which at which mu becomes zero and that temperature is called inversion temperature that temperature is called inversion temperature inversion temperature or temperature of inversion above the temperature of inversion the gas shows heating effect and below the temperature of inversion the gas shows cooling effect above temperature of inversion ti the gas shows heating effect heating effect and below the temperature of inversion the gas shows cooling effect cooling effect so it all depends what is the temperature of the gas if it is above the inversion temperature it will always show positive sorry it will always show heating effect but if it is below the uh, temperature of inversion it will always show the cooling effect now for every gas other than hydrogen and helium for every single gas for every gas except except hydrogen and helium the value the value of ti is more than room temperature room temperature room temperature means 25 degrees celsius that is ti is more than 25 degrees celsius in case of all the uh real gases except hydrogen and helium but on the other hand the uh room t the temperature of inversion of hydrogen is minus 80 degree celsius and that of helium is minus 240 degree celsius so as you can see over here the uh inversion temperature of all the gases is more than the room temperature and that of hydrogen and helium is less than the room temperature and if we are doing the experiment in at room temperature then obviously for real gases the inversion temperature the room temperature is this this is room temperature and their inversion temperature is up inversion temperature so for inversion temperature the, sorry for inver from the point of inversion temperature the gas is below it right the gas is below the inversion temperature so it will always show yes you are correct cooling effect cooling effect i've written over here above ti the gas shows heating effect but below ti this is below ti or it this shows cooling effect but on the other hand if you talk about hydrogen and helium then for hydrogen and helium the room temperature is over here this is the room temperature and temperature of inversion ti or it inversion temperature is over here right so for this case the at room temperature hydrogen and helium will always be above its inversion temperature so it will so yes you are correct uh, heating effect heating 
effect. So this is the reason why hydrogen and helium gets heated at room temperature when they expand under adiabatic condition and all the other natural gases or real gases gets cooled down. Okay, we can find the value of Ti that is inversion temperature or temperature of inversion mathematically as well by the formula Ti is equal to 2A by Rb where this A and B, A and B are are van der Waals constant and we are van der Waals constant and this R is the universal gas constant so for every gas A and B are different right and R is same for every single gas so if we put the value for respective gases we get the value of temperature of inversion for those respective gases and by using this uh, by knowing the value of temperature of inversion we can predict whether this gas will heat or cool when they expand under adiabatic condition now you might be wondering why joule thompson effect is very important we have read everything about it but still we don't know what is the use of it so this uh, this process is used to in the liquefaction of gases when the gas are being liquefied this process is highly used so this is what joule thompson effect actually is so in this video we learned what joule thompson effect actually is that is when the gas expand under adiabatic condition then the uh, that gas gets cooled down except for hydrogen and helium which will get heated then we learned about joule thompson experiment in which we saw the tube and there is the porous plug two pistons one pushes in one goes out and that proved the process and after that we saw that uh, joule thompson process is isoenthalpic in nature isoenthalpic means the enthalpy change will be zero and we knew about the uh, value of, we knew about the meaning of mu mu means the joule thompson coefficient that gives us the information whether the gas will heat or cool and finally we talked about temperature of inversion and why hydrogen and helium shows heating effect and and other gases shows cooling effect when they expand under adiabatic condition at room temperature so that's all in this video i hope you understood everything about this video if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video